Hi everyone, and welcome to a new training course on managing Octopus Deploy. Unlike previous training courses or other training courses, this course is focused exclusively on managing the Octopus Deploy instance itself. So this will cover how to install Octopus Deploy, how to upgrade Octopus Deploy, uh, configure HA, uh, maybe put Octopus Deploy behind a reverse proxy and so on and so forth. This is for Octopus managers or anyone interested in managing a self-hosted instance of Octopus Deploy. So let's go ahead and get started with the very first thing, which is gonna be installing Octopus Deploy. Now, if you have never installed Octopus Deploy, the first thing you're gonna to need to do is come to the downloads page, which you can do by going to octopus.com slash downloads. From here, you'll be able to download the latest version and you can select which version you want. Uh, at this time, at least of this recording, we have a Windows 64-bit as well as a Docker image that you can use. If you need to download previous versions of Octopus Deploy, you can come to our download archives and we have uh, every version that has been released up until the time you visit this page, going all the way back to the very, very first version that was released back in 2011. Now, obviously we don't recommend you install a version that was released back in 2011. We highly recommend you install the latest version that you can. For this video, as we're gonna be covering how to install Octopus Deploy, it's primarily gonna be focused on Windows. Uh, there are, and there is a Docker image that you can use to run Octopus Deploy on, and that's a Linux-based image. However, there are a number of settings that you're going to encounter within that Linux-based image, uh, specifically environment variables, that you need to know about right now. Uh, so the best way to kind of see what those are and understand what they are is by going through the user interface. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I have already downloaded a version of Octopus Deploy to go ahead and install. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the installer. Uh, it is a standard MSI, nothing super fancy about this. And we'll just go through the wizard, accept the license agreement, select the default location. I am installing this on a Windows Server 2022, at least at the time of this recording. So we shall see how everything goes. All right. Now what this is doing is this is copying all of the files and necessary components into the install directory that we've specified. This does not configure Octopus Deploy. What will happen as soon as we're done installing this is we will be presented with a configuration wizard. So when I click on finish, it will exit the setup wizard. And then immediately we should see, yep, the configuration wizard kick off. Now, a couple of things before I get started that I want to highlight is that I have pre-configured a Octopus Deploy database on my SQL Server. So with Octopus Deploy, there are two components that you need to know about that are external to the application. That is the database, and it must be SQL Server. I am running this on SQL Server 2019. Uh, my database is empty. I have also created a service account, Octopus Servers, and this service account, if we come into properties and we go to user mapping, it is a owner of the Octopus Deploy database. Uh, for whatever service account that you use, have it be an owner of the Octopus Deploy database is highly recommended because it's gonna go in and it's gonna create uh, new tables, it's going to create views, store procedures, a number of different things. And having owner access is definitely what we recommend, um, but limit it to just a specific service account. Only have the service account have access to Octopus Deploy. Don't have, let it have access to anything else. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get started, and we're going to configure a new Octopus Deploy server. First thing we need to do is we need to paste in a license key. Um, I have a license key off screen that I will copy in. Now, if you were using the Linux container, uh, you would be you would have to encode this as base64. And if you're going to do that, you're going to want to configure everything. 
uh, excuse me, encode everything as base64 from the beginning of this node all the way to the bottom of this node. You don't just encode, say, the key or the signature or anything like that. It's going to be the entire value. Next, we need to have a home directory, and this is where we're going to store configuration files, deployment packages, and other settings. So this is the second component uh, to Octopus Deploy outside of the uh, database that's external to the service. So the database stores all of the various configuration settings, uh, you know, how you deploy your projects, uh, you know, what applications you have, various variables, everything. But the the file share or the, the folder, this is what stores the blob files, such as your packages or your art build artifacts that you want to deploy, the task logs that are a result of your deployments, uh, any sort of images that you might upload, any number of those things that will be way too big to store inside of a database. I'm going to be using a local system account as this is just a virtual machine that's running on my local machine. Uh, in a real world scenario, uh, if you're running this on Windows, we highly recommend using, say, a custom domain account if whenever possible. But if not, local system account is perfectly acceptable. The next thing is we need to provide the database server name. So I'm just going to actually just pull the drop down. It's going to be my local database. And the database itself, excuse me, the server is going to be, let's refresh this. Oh, I want to use SQL Server Authentication. So I'm going to do Octopus SV, yep, SVC, type in my password. Let's refresh this. And I want to use the Octopus Deploy database that's provided. You can run Octopus Deploy on SQL Server Express, and that's something that you can see there, and you can even download it. Uh, that is good for uh, instances that are not going to be used very much or for a proof of concept or for a pilot. Uh, but if you're going to be using Octopus Deploy in any sort of uh, production enterprise level environment, we definitely recommend using something like Azure SQL uh, or using a SQL Server Standard or SQL Server Enterprise. It depends on what licenses are available to you. Next up, we need to provide a listening port for Octopus Deploy. Uh, I'm going to use 8080 as my listening port um, for no other reason that I don't want to overwrite the default listening port. Uh, and we'll get into that when we start configuring, say, reverse proxies in future videos. Authentication mode. So username, passwords are stored in Octopus. I do not have this hooked up to Active Directory. Otherwise, I'd recommend you use Active Directory. So I'm just going to give it... Uh, the username that I want to give, the email address. Oops, give it a password. And then go ahead and click on install. If you click on show script, this will show you the commands that are about to run. Um, so if you're going to be, if you want to automate this or anything along those lines, you can go ahead and click on this, copy these scripts to say PowerShell script or a batch file, and you can go ahead and run it. Uh, we're not going to do that. We're just going to click on install. Okay, the installation was successful. If we click the finish button, the Octopus Manager has now been changed and we can see the status of our installation. It is important to note that Octopus Deploy is a Windows service, at least on, when you install it on a Windows machine. So if you need to perform any additional configuration, uh, say you're just on a standard Windows service, you can come into your services area or console, and you can find Octopus Deploy. You can see that it's configured to run or start up as an automatic Windows service, and it's running under local system. If you needed to change what account this is going to run under, this is where you would change it. You would come in here, you would change the logon from local system account to a specific account, like a service account, provide the password, restart the service, and hopefully happy days. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and we can click on open browser. And now we can see that Octopus Deploy has been installed. 
go ahead and close that. And so now, yep, Octopus Deploy has been installed. We're presented with the onboarding wizard. And that is the end of this video. So this is how you install Octopus Deploy, some of the things that you're going to be configuring, uh, some of the things you need to make note of. Thank you very much for watching and have a great rest of your day.